it is. I wish I had a clapper. This is old fashioned. Got it. Okay. That's so we can sync the sound with the video. And that's why they have clappers and films. Because in the old days, they didn't record sound on the cameras. In fact, even up until recently, they didn't record sound on the cameras. Mm -hmm. And uh, so every time you see the clappers, that's just because it's, uh, you can sync what's happening visually with this actual clip. And what's written on that clapper is uh, the scene, all that stuff, so they know visually when they're doing the editing lines mm -hmm. there. So that's a free one for you. Oh, that's really cool. I can't even use this. Okay, so we're going to go and begin. So this is Editing Podcast, Tales, Tips, and Tricks. From the trenches, that took me three hours to come up with that title. Uh, we'll dive right into it. And the way this is going to happen, I'm going to go, go through these fast because we have a lot of content. Uh, there'll be time for questions uh, at the end, and then uh, we'll have some showing things on uh, audacity as well. Uh, awesome. So, so we'll break it up, and there'll be some fun stuff in here as well. Um, so, a brief introduction about myself. I am an IT professional, been doing it professionally since 1994, and that's too boring. I'm an independent filmmaker, and have been doing that since like 88. I've done a lot of uh, film festivals around like the Virginia area and things like that. Uh, I've done slam dance and some other things. That's my cool side of what, but the IT stuff pays the bills. So um, aside from that, here's a little demo reel from the past, 1993, so long ago. That was me in the tree. Too slow, man. Too slow. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that should work. <laughs> Again, do it. <coughs> Wait. <laughs> Go. <laughs> okay, quick. <laughs> But at these types of events, it's real boring to flip this, it's a rose, and things like that. So. Hi, uh, I uh, am currently trying to start my own business, so I'm technically unemployed right now. And uh, thank you. Um, <laughs> and I've been in the acting industry for a while, and I've done videography before. Um, I'm trying to get more into it because I just moved to New York literally last weekend. Wow. Um, yeah. Uh, and we'll see what happens with that. Uh, I worked as a graphic designer for about two years, um, and I'm pretty familiar with Photoshop, Illustrator, and all of those things. Uh, but typically, I learn on the fly with all of that, so when you see me talk about uh, Audacity, all that was just picked up doing this podcast. Uh, so I don't have the professional level that he has backing into it. Uh, mine's gonna be pretty lazy in comparison, uh, but, yeah, uh, that's that's essentially it. Uh, I think that's all yeah. I want to say. Well, it's about. funny because along the same lines, my background, I didn't go to film school. I didn't do any of that. I, I did the same thing. I learned as I went. 
uh, yeah. for everything. So yeah, but you you've got more years on it. Than yeah, yeah, than exactly. I, like I'm a little, little grayer. So, oh. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll see some more. But so diving into this, this is kind of a modification of a video, uh, a video making uh, a, a talk that I've done many times in the past. So I just took like all the video junk, mm -hmm. throw that out, and let's make it audio based. So. Um, there are so many parts to an uh, audio or video project, but really, if you step back from it and take a look at it, it's all the same. Uh, what's the approach? Uh, what's the story that needs to be told? You know, what's story or screenplay based? What is, what's the angles or the shots that you want to use? Or for sound? What level of sound quality are you going for, you know, for your final product? What do you want to do? That's going to be your storyboard or director of photography. Um, what can you do to get the best production value? A lot of that comes down to the equipment that you're working with. You know, what, 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 what are you working with? What's the best that you can do with that sort of equipment? Um, and again, a little disclaimer, this is just from, for me, from my, what I'm going to be saying, this is just from do, out there doing it. What I'm saying is not the way it must be done, it's just the way that I've found ways to make it happen. So, so again, if you've been entertained by or learn some things from this, then we've done our job up here. So, um, so the art of editing. So editing is the art, technique, and practice of assembling shots or clips into a coherent sentence or sequence. Um, I consider it the art of deceiving the audience in order to hide imperfection and enhance your message, manipulate the story that you're trying to tell so that it can be comprehended in a manner in which you like it to be. That's whatever it is, documentary, standard storytelling, art house, whatever it is. Uh, and it's not as harsh as it sounds. Um, uh, we want the talent or the end product to look or sound as good as possible. We want to keep with the style that the creators or producers are going for. Uh, if you, you know, you're know you dealing with like a, a style, Drunks and Dragons, they don't need to be as crisp and clean as, as, as what you want. They like to go off on tangents and things like that. So if I went in there and said, okay, I'm going to just start chopping all this stuff. We don't need that. We don't need that. Uh, I think that would probably make some fans angry, so you know, we've got to find that balance. So anyway, as editors, many times we can help define that style. But again, we have to have a very close relationship from the producers or the creators of the content. So we have a lot of power as editors. When it comes to the look and the feel of the final project, we must have a great understanding of the material uh, so that we can do, do our best with it. Uh, back in the day with the abridgment project, um, I, I'm connected with a lot of uh, people in the indie or no-budget film filmmaking world, and uh, I thought, well, shoot, I could probably grab a few of these people and say, hey, you want to help out with doing some editing on the Bridgman stuff? And they don't know it. They haven't been fans of the material. So if I gave them stuff, they may cut some stuff out of, like, Blood Drinker. That's not either. They may cut some stuff out of, uh, we don't need all of Roz. You need all of Roz, even on a Bridgman. So, mm -hmm. so... Because of that, I said, no, I'm just going to stick with it and do it, do it all myself because I'm a fan and I want to do the best with what I got. And I know the storylines. So. so, editing is a dance. Editors are choreographers, time lords, finishers, perfectionists, judges, juries, and executioners. And they manipulate the source footage and able and able to make it look great. That's another thing, real quick, is that um, Kevin Smith, if you all know him, um, he says that directors have a, a little bit of power, but editors are really where the power's at. And he says he edits and sits down with his editors every single time, and it's probably driving them nuts. Because um, he's so nitpicky about it, and if you see his movies, it's all about the conversation. So that's why his movies are so, I guess you could say, meticulous until lately. I don't know if he directed... Uh, Yoga Hoosiers or not? Did he? Did he direct that? Did he direct it? Okay, yeah. so that one seemed a little iffy on the editing. Yeah. But everything else before that, though, hey. Yeah, yeah. And of course, editing a Kevin Smith film, like especially especially the older ones, are very simple. You just <coughs> yeah, set the camera, set your angles. Very good. <coughs> Relax for a bit. Let them talk. <laughs> um, so uh, let's dive into trench tales, sticking along the line. So. Um, for me, my trench tales, diving back to the Bridgman Project, I've been a fan of Drunks and Dragons for a very long time, <clears throat> been listening to them, and then at one point, there was uh, a point where Michael and the gang were asking, hey, we're going to do some abridgment. Any fans out there want to do an abridgment? Uh, do, take our first 30 episodes, let's take them down and make them shorter, just so we can get people introduced into it, without having to listen all to all the beginning, slow learning curve episodes. Um, so I would never edited just audio before, but as a fan, I thought, hey, that's a great way to give back. Because I, I, I've got family, uh, I work full time doing IT, and I do this video, 
video stuff as much as I can as well. So I've got very little time and also very little money. So hey, here's a way I can give back. So uh, I dove into the video, into the, uh, into the project. I told Michael at the beginning, um, I wanted to do the apps without narration because he was talking about putting in narration, you know, every so often to break it up and, you know, they're fighting now and they go to another thing. And I said, I think you've got enough story in there. I want to just do no narration. Let's see how we can do, kind of piece it all together. Um, he's like, great, he didn't have to do any extra work, you know, doing narration. And, um, and again, as a fan at that point, it was like, I'm emailing Michael tomorrow and all of that. <laughs> so out of the first 30 episodes, I ended up doing 17 of them myself. And uh, at the end of that, Michael reached out to me and said, hey, you want to keep doing these? Uh, that'd be great. And so up until now, I think it's like 51 that are done right now. We're going to be doing more. There's a certain point where we're going to stop, but we're on wait until we found out what that was. And we actually talked about it a couple weeks ago. And so we actually have an endpoint for abridgement. So I'll be doing some more. Um, and the hardest thing, like some challenging parts about doing the, the abridgement episodes, uh, and here's a little side thing, editing full episodes are three times easier than editing an abridged episode because we have a limit of 20 minutes per episode that we, we are not going to go over for each abridgement episode. And the hardest one for me was episode 28, the spooky, crazy mystery hour. That was the one with the little, was it a monkey statue that was like poisoning everyone on the ship and everything. For Drunks and Dragons fans, sorry if you're not a Drunks and Dragons fan. Anyway, that, there was so much role play, so much really good content in there. It took me weeks to take that thing, bring it down, keep all the good bits in there, but still also make it make sense story-wise from beginning to end. It ended up being exactly 20 minutes before the outtakes. You know, it's a little, the whole thing's a little longer, but the entire thing was, it was exactly 20 minutes, and it was, it was a tough challenge. And then after that, they, they were liking what I was doing with, with doing the abridgement episodes. So he said, hey, would you be interested in doing some of the, the full, full length episodes? And I said, sure, no problem. So we do, I started with 170 and then came back at 182 and I think 183. And at that point, I've been alternating with Step Kingston uh, uh, ever since. And a real challenge for me was, okay, now I'm actually on a deadline. Because the way it works, when they're on their regular schedule, it comes out like Thursday night usually. Uh, we grab the footage whenever, sometimes we have to bug them to give me that footage, but we grab the footage either Thursday night or Friday morning. My timeline is the following Monday, I have to have mine done. So we have challenges, deadline, it's not too bad. So I have a Thursday through Monday rush, and then for me, I wish this panel was here before I started because I knew nothing about Audacity. I knew nothing about a bunch of different things. And so you remember, so you may have, some of you may have even complained, what is going on with the audio on these episodes? Because when 170 came out, the audio levels, like everything else is up here. When 170 came out, audio levels were down here. It sounded good. You just had to turn it up a little louder. <laughs> so, uh, so anyway, we'll deal with hints and things that you can do to make that better. And just FYI, 170's been remastered. It's now up here. And my other two... Uh, 182 and 183 will be remastered a couple weeks after this, so so you won't know anymore after that. So, cool. What have you got for us? Yeah, um, when I first looked up Drunks and Dragons, I just typed in D and D podcast, and yeah, <laughs> nope, the same thing. And I was like, hey, I don't know too much about D and D, so I started listening to it, and they said we don't know too much about D and D. I'm like, oh, this is great. I'm not gonna learn anything, but this is fun. Um, and so I listened to it. I became a fan uh, for a while. And I didn't really know how podcasts work because everything else that I've listened to is like Radiolab, you know, or anything done by WNPR or uh, like a New York studio or Gimlet Media where it's all produced and it's got backers and they're paid. So I thought, you know, coming from the acting industry, this is something that you apply for. And so right before I heard the episodes with Nika, because I wasn't fully caught up, I was like, hey, here's my resume. And then they were like, this is just for friends. Um, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> whoops. Um, so I just kind of tried to get more involved in the community. And you can get on Discord, you can get on Twitter, and you can just start talking to people. And it's such a good community that there was this group that was making this one podcast, and they're like, hey, we're looking for an editor. And I was like... I want to do something. And they said, cool, we'll get back to you. They never got back to me. And they said that they were doing something with Geekly Inc., but they weren't. And I think they were along the same lines of thinking that this was kind of a community sort of branded thing and not that it's a legitimate brand that they've come up with. So I sent them uh, uh, the Geekly Inc. Uh, email 
uh, the request saying, hey, so this podcast hasn't really gotten back to me. Do y'all know too much about it? And Michael says, no, but we're doing this Harry Potter one. Uh, and we kind of want an editor to pick stuff up. Would you want to do that? And I was like, uh, let me think about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me do that. So I then bugged them down with a ton of questions. I've been talking to Bajaya Shrishta ever since uh, pretty constantly. Uh, and she's the one who really led me into what the feel the tone as we were talking about and the talk that goes with uh, making that one because it's more of an interview kind of conversational one rather than this dramatic sort of story like uh, D&D podcast is. So the pacing's a little bit easier to narrow it down, but uh, yeah, they introduced me to all the tools and it just got much easier after that. And it's great because you get to hear all of them complaining and yelling at each other too that y'all don't get to hear. But yeah. I'll show y'all some later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's always a fun part is you get to hear all that stuff that didn't make it. Uh, sometimes stuff that's not on Twitch, so... <laughs> oh, fun fact, you guys will soon on You're a Wizard Harry because we're going to release a blooper episode eventually. Awesome. Yeah. That's <laughs> awesome. Those are always fun. Um, all right, so tips... We're going to dive into some tips for recording. This is really not the editing part, but if you're thinking about or if you're doing your own podcast, number one rule, the final product, product is only as good as your source audio. You can fix and clean up audio a small degree, but your, if your source is bad, your end product's unfortunately going to be bad. If you're recording, check the environment. And I do this when I do video uh, in conference rooms and things like that. I'll actually get there and people may look at me oddly, but I'll come into the room and I'll just sit here and close my eyes and listen. Got ACs running. That's about it. Can we cut off AC when we have this event? I'm sorry everyone, but I want to get this sounding as good as possible. It's only going to be an hour you can live. So what can you do? What else is there? Do you hear things that you can get rid of, turn off? Refrigerator running is a very common one when we're shooting. Unplug the refrigerator. You could maybe very small, but that's going to pick up, especially when you start boosting audio. So what can you do to the environment? Pets. Do you really want mm -hmm. pets showing up on, on your audio? We deal with that all the time. Yeah, but has <laughs> got two big dogs and yeah. a hardwood floor, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, smartphones. Mm -hmm. Smartphones. Okay, you put it on silence. Get it out of the room. Turn it off. Get it out of the room. You can survive without your phone while you're doing your podcast. Because believe me, bothers us when we're especially if it's on the table and the microphone's like yeah. right there it reverberates through it and makes it louder than yeah. it really is yeah and another thing get yourself a cheap mic stand get yourself a cheap uh, uh mm -hmm. cheap stand of any kind a piece of broomstick get your mics off your tables especially if you're doing some typing because if you're typing that's all going right onto that thing that's a constant <laughs> it's you get the mics up off that table um no joke i mean between between the two of us we we cut out uh, uh, we got all the audio tracks we cut out Probably about, and this is a, just a very big estimate, so don't bring this, you don't have to write this down, but I cut out at least 70 to 80% of the background garbage from everything you hear from each track. You know? Our big talkers, Tim, uh, Tim's channel, got Tim, Tim, uh, we got Tim and Jennifer, mm -hmm. Michael, the big talkers, there's less on them, but, but Bachman channels and Nika channels, psh, you'll see it, you'll pictures in a little bit, but you'll see a lot of empty spaces because they're not talking. And those empty spaces, maybe keyboard, maybe a, a storing dog if you hurt. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Diving back into the editing. So, uh, Levelator. If you haven't heard it, get it. Uh, yeah. It's not supported anymore, but you can still download it out there. If you find out and it's gone, and you can't find it anymore. Get with us because we have copies of it. We can, we can send you. This is a must if you if you aren't using it. And back to what I was talking about before: 172, 182, and 183. I didn't know about Levelator. And that's the reason my sound was down here and not at the same level, all right? So what it does, I don't even know how, but it, it boosts all the audio and kind of helps level the audio and get it, get it up, up. What it does is it amplifies all of the audio across the board so that it's at the same level. Mm -hmm. um, typically, if you uh, take several different audio clips and put them together, you can see that some of them reach their peaks and that'll hurt your ears when you're listening to it to edit. Uh, but what you want is for all of that to be balanced, and this automatically balances all of it when you sync it into one single audio file. Yeah. And the way I do it, and this may differ from the way you do it, I have four audio tracks, one for all the different talents doing their recording. I level at each one individually mm -hmm. and bring them in and work with them all together. Um, because one of the things you'll see, and we'll talk about this in advanced, uh, uh, or Trench Tales too, is Levelator is great. It does a great job, but it'll boost everything. So you may get things you won't, don't want boosted. So that'll be something you have to be aware so of. So, quick question: Do you use Levelator before you clean the audio or after? I do it first thing. First thing I do without audio is I levelate it, and I do mine after. 
So like I I go through and I put it all together and then I clean it up and then I save it as a wave file, a uh, WAV, mm-hmm. and then I just throw it into level later and I send it to Bajaya and then like a week later I'll hear, should we have edited that out? And I go, uh oh. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's it can work either way. It depends on the quality of the audio that you get. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. again, back to what I was saying before, tips for recording, you know, again, we can only do so much with the audio that's there. Um, if it sounds bad, we we can do a little bit. It's still going to sound bad at the end. Audacity, if you haven't heard of it, I'm sure everyone in here has heard of it. Free audio audio editing and recording software. Uh, extremely powerful, easy to use. It's free, and there are tons of online help help on how to use it. Uh, there's a, uh, a link here, and I'll I'll, I'll shoot off uh, or I'll put up in the uh, Slack the presentation once we're all finished. But uh, there's a link where you can just just do a Google a YouTube search on how to use it. And I don't use Audacity because I've got the video making background. Yeah. Um, I, I work out of Adobe Premiere. Uh, but I always, when I'm editing every single episode of, of, of uh, Drunks and Dragons, I have uh, Audacity open because I use it to do some audio recording on the fly, like real quick. Oh, I need a sound effect. Record, mic. All right, things like that. So it's a, it's, I use it on every single episode. Documentation. Why documentation? From beginning to end, what is it that you do? You know, follow your documentation. You know, have it up if you need it. You know, if you know everything by heart, you don't have to do it. But but document it anyway. That way, when you forget, you're off at GeekCon, you come back and you're like, oh crap, what was that one step? Open it up. You, you got it right there. Uh, Steph and I, just to kind of get us on the same page, we documented what we do. Uh, you know, as far as like blah 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 blah. First pass, it's all right there. Uh, but that way, we're kind of on the same page because again, we've got multiple editors doing the same show. We don't want me doing one things my way and her doing her thing, her things her, her way. We want it to sound as close together as we can. So, if think of it in terms of like if someone had to fill in for you or take over, uh, suddenly you're in the hospital or whatever, how can you be sure that they can do it correctly? Because you know, every one of you knows, it's only good when I do it <laughs> from your perspective. It's only good when you do it yourself. That's when it's perfect. So you know, throw those steps down because. Every once in a while, I go back and look at it and like, crap, what was that step? Oh yeah, I'll go do that. So even if it's a quick text document, just save it where the project files are. Um, and another thing, if it's not needed, silence it. So here's a quick shot. Here's the uh, uh, wave or the audio files from uh, Audacity. Here's here's the uh, Premiere. Look at all those blank spots right there. Uh, those are all places where I have silenced it. There's nothing going on. No talking. And as you can see, we have. Jennifer, Bogman, Nika, and Thrifty. She used to be called Nicole until I heard her getting mad at someone for calling her Nicole, so I changed it to Nika. So. Um, here's what a final project of mine looks like from beginning to end. You know, and as you can see, we've got the same files, all these silenced areas. You can see who don't who don't talk a lot. <laughs> it looks pretty similar in Audacity yeah, yeah. too. Down here, uh, all the audio effects and things you'll see them popping up from time to time, and sometimes there's music files and things like that. How are you guys liking the uh, effects? Yeah. Good, good. I always like to hear that. Uh. <laughs> Real quick on, on the documentation as well. I also did documentation when I first started, um, and it's just a really easy way to get yourself into the habit of doing a process. Um, even if you're not working with another person, it's good to have that check one, check two, check three, and then after that, you know, you memorize it, so you're good. Yeah, exactly. And then if you need it, it's there. Mm-hmm. So, um, so here's a, here's an example of remo- removing clutter, an extreme example. So- away from uh, the overall project so uh, we're just gonna bring everyone back on and I will don't someone worry is... somebody's gonna like that he's not the leader no, somebody he's always not the leader, does. But he's, always he's, does. He's, he's good too <laughs> he's know. science mm-hmm. and he got oh, bullied off because um, well we don't want to stretch up the bad memories of the past nicer. so tighten it up another thing you can do tighten it up think about what, how you talk in real life think about how uh, movies, sound when you're watching them, uh, things are pretty crisp and clear and uh, tight, you know, as far as moving along. Now again, don't go against what, if you're, if the producers or your project, if you want, don't want that feel, then obviously don't listen to what I'm saying. But if you want to tighten it up and just sound, you know, make it sound better, I mean, just like the beginning intro, it's funny, the action and things like that that I have loved to do, that, that mentality is weird to say, but it is, I use that. When I'm editing Drunks and Dragons, you know, things are like tight, things are, you know, right on top, you know, it's, it's, but again, keep, keep some of the sloppy in there, but, uh, 
how can you make conversations sound more natural? Sometimes when you've got all these different audio sources, uh, audio things being recorded, and these people are across the country, different locations, it get, gets out of sync. So you may have to do a little bit of tweaking and moving of audio just to kind of make things sound more natural. Door, isn't it? Michael? The door in front of you? Yes. Yeah. Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> yes. It, um... Door, isn't it? Michael? The door in front of you? Yes. yes. Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> yes. It is a wooden door and... Um door isn't it michael <laughs> the door in front of you yes yes. <laughs> yes it is a wooden door and um emblazoned on it is uh what looks like a, a large insignia of a fist like we can fire wouldn't you say <laughs> the door in front of you yes. yes yes it is a wooden door and um emblazoned on it is uh what looks like a, a large insignia of a fist like we could we could light it on fire wouldn't you say <laughs> could, could, like, well, I guess I, was, <clears throat> I keep talking in Jennifer voice. My bad. Um, I guess everything in here is stone except for the door. The door on fire. And this room. Hey, what's, it's a, it's a wooden door, isn't it, Michael? <laughs> the door in front of you. Yes. yes. Yes, it is a wooden door, and um, emblazoned on it is uh, what looks like a, a large insignia of a fist. Like. We could, we could light it on fire, wouldn't you say? I guess everything in here is stone except for the door, so what, it's not like we'd all go... Well, as you see, when I'm doing the first pass editing, it's like that. I'm just It's like a constant play, constant play, constant play, and I'm trimming like mad the entire thing while it's going. Again, keeping with it, but shortening things up. As you could tell, I was bringing things a little closer together just so the delays aren't there. Sometimes the delays are funny. That was a little bit, you know, him going, Michael, still left into the final product. And you got the point, but uh, just trimmed it a little bit more. Um, another thing you should do is, is if you're going to be doing like a series, template your project, create a template. Um, that way you just open that up, save it as, a, as episode 21 or whatever, and then you just throw in your new stuff. All, every, every single one of my uh, projects, it's got the template name in there, D&D Final Mixdown. Uh, I've got the starting music, intro music. I've even put a little slice there, so I can. That's where I drag the starting audio. So I got the intro right there, and then when he goes greetings, it all begins right there. It's real fast and simple. Got the outro music right here uh, as well. That way, I can just save time, throw the stuff in there, begin editing, and then add the extra stuff at the end. So uh, this is this will be relevant. <laughs> check your final product. Very very important. If you don't do it, which I'm sure everyone does, check your final product before you release it. Do not assume anything. Uh, I recently had to change my method. It used to be, I finished the project, I would listen to the beginning, grab a few spots, listen to it, okay, cool. Listen to the middle, grab, grab a few spots, it sounds great. Get to the end, grab a few spots, and did anyone listen to episode 220 and be like, what is wrong with this audio? Something's missing here? That was the one where they had uh, the two guys playing the Atten's. Uh, so, yeah. so, I did this process. Started middle, shot it off to them, saying, okay, it's up, it's ready, go ahead and, uh, and get it published or post it. And uh, he, suddenly one of the fans said, hey, there's missing audio in there. And I went back and looked, and sure enough, we took it down like immediately. And I had to remaster it and get it back to Michael. What happened is the audio that I listened to, everything was fine. Everything was good, but the, the guests were not speaking at those moments. So my new process is you go check it in your three spots, but you verify that all the audio tracks are there. So if you don't have all everyone speaking when you're testing, you find spots to make sure that everyone's speaking. So, so I take ownership for that one, but uh, <laughs> very important. So again, another thing too, if you are not on deadlines, uh, you may want to set the deadline because even now, I look back at old junk I've done, I could be editing that same stuff, even right now. Finish it, set an end date, get your stuff done. Here's a little secret, you will, you will never make a perfect project. I'm sorry to tell you that. You will never make a perfect project. You'll strive for it, you'll do the best you can, but you will never obtain it, all right? You'll get better, you're gonna get better, and you're gonna get better, and you're gonna be almost there. But what helps is having a deadline, because that's gonna force you to stop. It's gonna force you to stop. Uh, when I've worked on things in the past, and if I didn't have a deadline, I would just be like, oh, I can tweak that, I'll listen to that, and I'll be like, oh, that, that's, I could just keep working, keep working, keep working, and keep working. Well, as you go, just do the best you can with what you're working on, 
and just get that out. Get that out the door. Next time, whatever you've learned, you'll do better on the next one. And you'll get better and better and better as you're going through. I mean, you just look. I mean, a perfect example is look at the Drunks and Dragons from the beginning. Things were a little bit rough at the beginning. And the production quality throughout the years has been rising and rising and rising. So, so again, that striving for perfection, that's something that comes up in a lot of business books and things like that. Um, it, and it sounds harsh. It's not harsh. But... Uh, but you know, the goal is just do the best you can, is, is what I'm saying. And set a deadline if you don't have a deadline. So, um, All right, so noise cleanup. Here's uh, some trench tails. These are some of the things that we have to deal with a lot. <laughs> yeah. Garbage trucks, sirens, occasional yeah. mic bumps. Yeah. Furniture, sneezing, coughing, pet noises. Um, you know, those are things we always have to deal with. Take out when we can. I can't take out all these. People are talking and it's good. You know? Yeah. So that's one danger of having things in the same room with you. Now again, that kind of adds to it. It's funny, but that's just something to think about. You know, if something happens right now during one of these lovely snores and it's something relevant to the story and it's something that really has to stay there, then that makes it difficult. Suddenly there's going to be a snore. What was that? So anyway. Um, I'm constantly taking out the mic bumps. I'm constantly taking out furniture, mm -hmm. sneezing and coughing if I'm able to. Totally good. Um, um, oh, and documentation. Remember, uh, uh, practice what you preach. Uh, Raven Queen came up again. Guess what? I didn't document how I did her voice the first time back in like 170. So, uh, so hey, uh, I went and created a document, and now we actually have a document how to do the Raven Queen voice. Because what I ended up having to do when the Raven Queen came back again recently. Uh, I had to go find that old episode. Luckily, I have a copy of everything I've done since I've been on this project, so I can go back. And I was like, okay, how did I do this? How did I do this? I wasted probably 30 minutes tricks, like recreating the steps. While I recreated those steps, I documented how to do it. Uh, and then I applied them to, the, uh, to what I did there. I mean, especially in this, you know, if something quirky comes up for a character or something like that, moving forward, I'm definitely going to document it because, you know, you know, that saves a lot of time to get that freaky Raven Queen voice. So. Vijaya, I think, uses a laptop, um, and it overheats, so she puts a fan underneath it, uh, and she taps, you know, every now and then, and it sounds much louder than it does when Michael taps, because his are very nice mechanical sort of sounds, like, and you recognize them. You start to recognize sounds by their shape. It's yes. weird. It's, yeah. I so can tell you like, what a snore looks like. Yeah, yeah. so <laughs> it's like you get this little, form in your sleep. you know, um, or exactly. whenever Bajaya coughs, you know, I know that that's a different visual uh, shape. And uh, I kind of asked Bajaya, I was like, hey, so do you have a fan that you're using? She's like, yeah, my computer gets hot. And I was like, well, we're not going to fix that. Okay. <laughs> um, and you just kind of accept it and yeah. you go through it. And I'll show you a trick to do that later on with Audacity. Um, so I'm going to dive into some advanced tips. So there's no automatic way to do everything you want with the source footage. Um, I've been asked this before. Hey, is there, can we just like delete every audio that's, delete everything silent? I wish there was a button you could do but it's not gonna work. Even if there's something that claims it's gonna work, it will not work. It, it requires human interaction to do it. So every part of the process requires some hands-on manipulation, even level later spots, because it boosts everything. You may get those fan noises boosted, no one's talking, okay, I can cut those out. So, um, you know, back to the background noises. And a good thing is learn your editing software, become an editing ninja, uh, and just die. The best way to do it, hit the YouTube channels and just play with it. And just, just mess around. Uh, I guess that's how you've mastered uh, as you've been learning. Um, and that's YouTube videos are nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Back when in the early days, I didn't have the YouTube channels that wasn't around, and, and so I just had to do it on my own. And Actually, see. there <laughs> is a software program um, that uh, Radio Lab even recommends, and they uh, referenced. I I really like communication, so I'll call out anybody on Twitter, and um, they responded and they said, "Hey, check out transom.org." Uh, Transom.org has a lot of really cool information on editing podcasts as well and editing audio. Uh, but they mentioned uh, Hindenburg, which is, I highly recommend if you ever get the money to buy Hindenburg because its uh, audio balance is automatic and it makes it smoother and cleaner. And it's just, you know, I think it's like a couple hundred bucks. So when I have the money, I'll get it. Uh, but. Not right now. Right yeah. now, Audacity is is okay. Yeah, I've heard a lot of good things about it. It's too. so nice. But the problem you can get a version for your phone. It's crazy. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, the, prob yeah. the problem or blessing for me is, is uh, 
doing Adobe for so long, it's like that's I love yeah. Adobe. So I, where I work out of everything Adobe. I'm the same thing with Photoshop. Yeah. I can't leave it. Um, all right, so back into the advanced tips. Time can be manipulated to enhance and improve what you're doing. Not only tightening up, you can change time. You can move sections of audio just to help cover up a bad cut or make things sound better. Um, again, use this to your advantage for, for covering up a bad cut, but always stay with the intended look or feel of the desired output, and you don't, don't, don't overdo it. Um, the number one thing is it's all got to be comprehended. A lot of times people are talking, and someone may say a joke that's funny. And other people are talking over that. Well, maybe I'll stretch time, pull them over here so we can get that joke in there. So, um, and, or if I have like a, uh, uh, some laughter happening and I do a cut, and it sounds odd when I go from one cut to the next cut, I'll grab some laughter and bring it so it's slightly covered to hide that, that, uh, that transfer. Uh, a lot of times, uh, repetitive lines. Hey, Thrifty, while well, things are going on, Thrifty, Thrifty. Uh, thrifty, I would like to, blah, blah, blah. I can cut out all that Thrifty, Thrifty, Thrifty stuff. So, uh, Again, here's a quick little thing here on beforehand. 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 But there's a certain axe on page. Um, uh, you know. He <laughs> he. Certain axe on page. Nope, not there. Are you um, flipping through every single page until you find it? Seven. Sorry. Okay. Let's make this sound better. Are you through every single page until you find it? Well, I'm near it. I'm, I'm just so close to it. I okay. feel it. On a certain app. On page 60. So, of course, I'm clearing things that aren't needed. Um, we're going to dive into this. Where did he find well, it? Well, I'm near it. I'm, I'm just so close to it. Okay. On a certain app. On page. So, on page. We got the page earlier. So, let's see if we can tie these together. So, let's ripple delete that. Brings them all back. So, let's see what this sounds like. Prepared this beforehand, but there's a certain axe on page 67 that. that tried to solve all. There you go. Tim sounds awesome. He knows exactly what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> and that's something Michael even says. He uh, early on when I was editing it, uh, he said, "Take out all the ums." And I go, "Really?" He goes, "Yeah, yeah I'm not joking about that." Yeah. I go, "Oh, yeah, there are a lot of ums." <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you, at the beginning, yeah. you can listen. The um yeah. goes down later. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah, because I'm not fixing that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Changing time. This I've selected all the audio. I'm gonna. I want to have Nika come in right on on top of Tim here. So we're gonna get her audio to. That's a little too much. Bring everything back. Notice I've still got everything selected, so I'm not making anything out of sync. So I'm not listening to Nika. She should be right on top of Tim. Of it, and I've been pretty vocal that a lot of Norhal steals from. Strahd. I don't know what you're talking about. All of it is fresh, new, and innovative, and I love it. Michael should be right on top of her. Some of the delay is trying to figure out how to keep things on screen so you can actually see it. So notice we've got Nika saying her line. Uh, we got a, a Jennifer laughing right here, and then we got Michael uh, beginning his next bit. So we just tighten that up. Let's see if it's still tight. Stealing bits and pieces of it. And I've been pretty vocal that a lot of Norhal steals from... Strahd. I don't know what you're talking about. All of it is fresh, new, and innovative, and I love it. It's got that Tim's. <laughs> All right, so Michael's a, a hair short, or a, 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 hair, a hair too early. So let's just I'm gonna bring him over just just a, like a fraction of a second. Of it, and I've been pretty vocal that a lot of Norhal steals from Strahd. I don't know what you're talking about. All of it is fresh, new, and innovative, and I love it. Well, it's got that <laughs> Tim spin on it. Much better. I like that much better. So we're going to do, we're going to bring everything back. So we're black and sync. Strahd. I don't know what you're talking about. All of it is fresh, new, and innovative, and I love it. Well, it's got that <laughs> Tim spin on it. <laughs> um, smart. Okay. Definitely need to bring that back. I like uh, Jennifer Cheek. All of it is fresh, new, innovative, and I love Jennifer Cheek should be laughing a hair earlier. Let's see what that sounds like while she's... I don't know what you're talking about. All of it is fresh, new, and innovative, and I love it. <laughs> well, it's got that Tim spin on it. Boom. Tim should be talking right there, followed by, followed by additional <laughs> laugh right there. So... A Norhal steals from Strahd. I don't know what you're talking about. All of it is fresh, new, and innovative, and I love it. <laughs> well, it's got that Tim spin on it. <laughs> uh, nope. Needs to be a hair closer. So go ahead and bring it right to there. Bring that right to there. Let's just get right from here. Strahd. I don't know what you're talking about. All of it is fresh, new, and innovative, and I love it. <laughs> well, it's got that Tim spin on it. <laughs> um, much, smart much DMs borrow. I had to do that with the episode that's about to come out for your Wizard Harry because there was a lot of spaces. Because you're going to hear at the very beginning, uh, uh, Michael goes, all right, so this chapter is 
short. <laughs> <laughs> and so you got to like keep the joke in there, but at the same time tighten it up so that yeah. the audience doesn't go, is it is it working? <laughs> and, and here is my last very cool tip for you. I use this constantly. It's the three frame rule, and then you get the dive in. Yeah, cool. three frame rule, patent pending. Um, I will take audio, if I've got a bad cut and I've got nothing available to throw over top of that cut, I will take audio where it's just like garbage is happening here that doesn't matter. I'll leave it in, I'll even bring it over a little bit, and I will take the audio and drop it. So it'll be normal, normal, and then I'll fade the audio out. I can do that for up to as little as three frames, which is nothing. And it makes the cut seamless. Uh, I do that all the time. Um, I do it for longer than three frames, but you know, I, I, I've done it for, I've never done it smaller than three frames. Before. I do the same thing in Audacity. Yeah, yeah, good. That's good, because I don't even know how to use Audacity. I'll see some Audacity stuff. Cool. You have 10 minutes that you can rock. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, so real quick, here's the kind of stuff that you can hear. Hold on a second. Yeah. Hey, Ma. <laughs> oh, no, I'm talking to, sorry, people. I'm talking to people online. How was that? It was good. I fell asleep at the last second. The guy says hello. hello. She says hello. Uh, I fell asleep at the second no. I, I went to bed. So, what's what's different about uh, the You're a Wizard Harry podcast is that every single one of these. I individually do, so for instance, they've got three segments, if you ever listened to it before. They've got the Quizich, then the chapter review, and then they do a segment at the very end. Each one of those I edit separately, and then I'll put through level later at the very end, and then I put it all together into a template. So it's a three-step process, but what's cool about it is that when you put it into the template, it's just so much easier to move all the files around, because it's already together. Um, but yeah, uh, you keep on hearing a lot I of this. I was like, I didn't, I was like, I don't really need it. We didn't have any, there's like no bread left, Ma. There's like a butt, so I ate, I ate. Come it. on, Ma. Why I wasn't there anymore? Bread butts, bread butts all over. <laughs> um, but it's great because uh, you heard in there maybe uh, that there was some bumps as well. You get constant bumps all the time. Here is what... Uh, it'll look like after I load everything up. Um, I typically open up Audacity and I will go into File, Import, and bring in everything. You can also do a drag and drop. Uh, so, cool. Uh, you'll sometimes see mono, you'll sometimes see uh, stereo. Stereo is what Sarah went on because she was on a different computer. That just means it has two separate things and when you put things together you can't have mono be with stereo to, uh, I don't know why, uh, but Audacity doesn't let you do it. Anyways, this is the uh, raw version of the product. Where's my mouse? There it is. It's tiny. Sorry. Uh, no, you're fine. Uh, but I make all of these notes. Wow. Whoa, you can do that? Yeah. Wow. And this is what's really cool about Audacity is if you press Control B, uh, you can, uh, well, I press uh, space to pause and play, but control B is to put in like a note. You can highlight a section, uh, for instance, like that, and control B, boom, you have a highlighted section. It's already got the note in there. Just type it out, press enter, you're done. Um, How do you control B. Control B. But if you're already running and you want to put that in, uh, say it's going like this. Michael, let's say you, say you do Sarah, Control M, and you can just make it <coughs> immediately. Oh, um, that was funny. <laughs> that was funny. Um, that was a good place to turn. So, uh, <laughs> what's cool about this is this is their intros. Um, they just went in, they did a whole bunch of different intros, they did all their endings, and they did a whole bunch of different takes. Uh, so, what I do is I take all of that and I put it together. No, I don't want to say it. <laughs> into things like this. Uh, these are the finished waves, and whenever you put it into Levelator, it's going to come out saying output. So uh, here is Vajada saying. I know you want to help us out, so why don't you head on over to iTunes and leave us a five star review? And also. <laughs> and uh, whenever you uh, are editing, 
you might end up hearing some of that if you heard it sounded like a little bit like she was talking through a, yeah. a tube. Yeah. Um, sometimes you're going to get that no matter what. Uh, because what I do, <laughs> I find an area. So I press Control Alt and then I scroll, and that's how I zoom in pretty easily. Uh, and I'll find some form of dead space, highlight it, effect, noise reduction, get noise profile. So you get that, press over here and it selects the entire thing, effect, noise reduction again, and I typically have it set up automatically to be uh, 12, 6, 0. Um, those are easy numbers to memorize and they usually have a lot of background noise. So when I uh, originally put all this together, like the background noise will look more like this and these will look much more uh, amplified. So then I just press OK, and it goes through this process of essentially silencing it. Wow. Um, yeah, it's really cool. It gets rid of the background noise, but it also reduces the quality of the audio of the people who are talking. Um, so if you do it too much, it sucks. <laughs> uh, and like if you hear some of the early episodes that I was editing, uh, they almost all sound like that. Uh, until I started using Levelator. And Levelator is cool because it'll do the same thing as selecting everything and amplifying. Um, amplifying is where you can make everything louder, or quieter, and it's a waste of time. Uh, you don't want to do that unless if you're using Levelator. It automatically does it all for you. Can't stress that enough. <laughs> and I think I'm going to leave it at that. If y'all have any questions, just find me later on, and I'll tell y'all like shortcuts and stuff. Question for yeah. purpose of notes taking. Yeah. Um, under the uh, noise reduction tool, because I never really paid attention to yeah. the categories. Or what was the third category that was for zero? What's that called? Frequency. Frequency, thank you. But yeah, I think that's pretty much it for okay. what I've got. All right, so any other questions before we wrap up on the final page here? Uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and then also, there's my YouTube if you want to see a bunch of my fun, embarrassing life. Uh, it's all right there, <laughs> including some feature link. Uh, Fun and bad movies. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you watch Investigative Discovery, I might be on there. Um, don't watch it though, it's bad television. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Uh, any other questions from the group? Great. So, yeah. Audacity, between Audacity and, and Premiere, is there a functionality difference between the two or is it just preferences? Um, I yeah. think a part of it is preference because Audacity has the same stuff. Okay. It's just uh, you don't has, have as many shortcuts. It's not as accessible. It's just like uh, choosing between um, what's that uh, free uh, editing program um, for like visual stuff. It's like Photoshop, but it's yeah. GIMP. Yeah, GIMP, it's like yeah. using GIMP versus Photoshop. Okay. So if you know all the shortcuts and everything, that's why uh, they've enslaved me with Photoshop is I can't leave it now because right. uh, it's so easy. Uh, but with GIMP, you know, if you learn the shortcuts, it's fine. And with Audacity, just because of how simple the Your Wizard Harry podcast is, I just use a few short codes. Not that much so at all. So I have a question for you, actually. Yeah. Um, so with, with Audacity, you know, mm -hmm. like with, within, within uh, oh, hey Cheryl, there's a song. Um, um, so with, with uh, Premiere, yes. you know, if I say I have like a clip of audio or something like that, and I'm like, okay, I want to grab a section here, I've got that. And I'm going to go to there, and I can I can actually just drag this and just pop it anywhere I want time wise. Um, That's cool. Can you do that in Audacity? <laughs> yes. Okay. In a way, I, but we, we can do that off off air. But well, uh, literally, <laughs> you highlight it, you copy it, and you select wherever, and you paste it. Oh, okay, cool, okay. cool. And it can be its own track. Yeah, you know? it's much more like editing a word document. You know, okay. Okay. yeah, it's, it's less cool and quick. Mm -hmm. It's going to take you longer. Yeah, that's the one thing I do love about Premiere. Is, is I can just dive right in, I can expand. I mean, I, I feel for me, this is this, I can do, do a lot more hands on, like nitty gritty, really yeah. fast. Absolutely. Um, into it. And like once I've got my master tracks, you'll notice there's like locks right here. I've locked these down, <laughs> and cool. uh, that way I can't mess them up. I've got them set. If I need to go and tweak them, I can dive right back in cool. and grab it. So, yeah. All right, anyway, we're wrapping up. Thank you very much, all, for coming. And well, I'm sure we'll see you around Yay. later. <laughs> Oh, and you can find me on Twitter at J. Allen Matthews Jr. Yay! Yay. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Bro. Thanks. Also, I write articles on GeekLink, so if you just search my name on there, I'm sure you'll find it. All right. Thank you. 
Yeah, and, and just so you know, uh, this is a vanilla install of, uh, of uh, Audacity, so mm -hmm. those are probably the default settings right there. Oh, no, this copied over. Oh, copied from your project? Yeah, project? Because, okay, cool, yeah cool. Um, that's what's cool about Audacity is it always brings over whatever you've already put into it. Okay, that's cool. Um, and uh, I never touch frequency. And speaking never of editing, frequency. when I edit this together, you won't see me ask that question. It'll never happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I just wanted to talk with you briefly about what I encountered when I took a look at the source footage of uh, the uh, editing podcast panel. So I set up the cameras prior to the event. We were having the skirmble around to get the room ready. I had two guys running camera uh, since I was going to be doing the presentation. Um, so we set everything up. My two guys running camera really didn't do a great job. They actually uh, didn't touch the cameras. So uh, just to show you what I was working with, as you can see, I have one boring, badly angled shot from camera A, and I have a bad angle with bad lighting from camera B. Um, so remember how I said a portion of editing is covering up mistakes. Uh, in the presentation you just watched, it was the entire thing was a mistake. And so uh, what I ended up having to do is I'm going to have to do some a lot of... <laughs> Uh, tinting of color and doing all sorts of fun stuff. Uh, then I'm gonna have to do a lot of digital zooms. So even though I'm shooting in high definition, uh, I'm doing digital zooms on things. So you'll see, as you saw, the uh, the video. Uh, you know, once you get into some of those close-ups, you you lose the the high definition. But in the end, I'm happy with the final product that you just watched. Um, luckily for all the video you know, intro at the beginning, I, I had the raw footage of that, so I could actually do a, a rough with the actual footage. So I just brought that full screen as you saw and of course uh, luckily I'm also working with the the uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation from, from uh, when I did it the, there on site and I was just able to pull all those slides just directly in uh, and and use the actual slides and just get hit zoomed in on them so anyway a little behind the scenes goof on uh, on uh, how this was filmed luckily this is the very first thing we filmed for GeeklyCon and uh, in the, all the others I was actually running around doing the camera work so uh, I was getting the shots I wanted and I was able to direct the, the, the folks running camera so that's it I'm glad it happened on mine and not someone else's so